I was in a cult for 30 years and they controlled practically every facet of your life. Uh, what you wear, what you looked at for entertainment, what you read, uh, everything in your life, even who you marry. So my time in the cult was really colored by being told what to do and told that I was insignificant. I decided that I'd had enough and told them so that I was leaving. And they told me I would never amount to anything if I did. And that's how I got out. I was very happy and everything was going super well. And I had four really great years. Then in 2011, I got my cancer diagnosis. I went through my treatment and surgery, came out of surgery, and I could not hear. It took two years of trying different things, different uh, uh, hearing aids, the whole gamut, seeing doctors, and before I found a cochlear implant that worked for me. When I decided to become an artist, I was working on the assembly line for Ford Motor Company, Dearborn Stamping. And I had turned 50 and said, that's enough. I'm gonna do what I wanted to do my whole life, and that's make art. The title of my book is her purse smelled like juicy fruit. This print captures what I wanted to say about Ma. It's purely speculative. She's on a train. She could be headed to Detroit. She could be headed to the bottom of things in New York, investigating murders and whatnot. I know so little about her. She sits alone, backlit by intense light that obscures the truth about her appearance and reality. But her purse always smelled like juicy fruit. I had little stories to tell in connection with each print. So you needed to have the story and the print. And then we thought, hey, well, maybe people could take the book, walk through the exhibition, see the full-size print, read a little different story, get a little more out of it. It got a lot of positive response. A lot of people identified with uh, the stories, with relatives being presented. My three daughters would comb their mother's hair for hours. Mom would sit quietly while they did it. The title refers to a line in Bill Withers' song, Grandma's Hands. If I get to heaven, I will look for grandma's hands. If my girls get to heaven, I suppose they will look for grandma's hair. I tell the story of my mother's trip to New York City. Her sister was murdered, and she went there to get to the bottom of things. Mom was so secretive, I don't know how the trip turned out, but I was amazed that this little tiny woman went across the country to get to the bottom of it. Carving linoleum and making prints is not a complicated thing, really. Uh, you use a sheet of linoleum, and I like the softest stuff that I can get. You take a set of knives of varying width, and you start to carve out a drawing. You put a drawing on the list. And on, now, I work with a very minimal drawing because I like to feel this out as I go along. Um, I am able to see in my mind black and white reversed there on the, um, the linoleum, and I just get a feel for what I want to do, getting the different textures 
to show up in the linoleum. And it's really just that simple. Carve it out. Once it's carved, you ink it, goes through the press, wheel it through, and there's your print. I realize now that I have to say something about what I see. What African Americans, what the underclass goes through here should be dealt with in my world. I think it's the job of artists to enlighten people, to trigger thought. Um, we shouldn't just attempt to make something beautiful and make people feel good. We also need to irritate. We need to provoke change because obviously it's what's needed today.